Better late than never, am I right? As I said not too long ago, I wanted to avoid doing double reviews, and I have. So here we have a lovely triple review. Now, not to say I wanted to avoid talking about these three games, but my god, just oh, not, not good. But anyway, first up, we have the Valentine's Day shootout with Detroit. Now again, this was a pretty big game in terms of the standings, and without Bergeron, flat out the team faltered. Not gonna lie, the caption for this recap is gonna be Gong Show, because that's exactly what this game was. It started off well, Marchand, because who else, scored his 28th goal of the year eight seconds into the game, setting the franchise record for the quickest goal to start a game. From there, two goals in 14 seconds. Henrik Zetterberg ties it, but Zach Trotman, of all people, puts the Bruins back up on top two to one, under three minutes into the game. Now, in fairness, the Bruins, once again, got burned by the coach's challenge. It's amazing to me that the referees can still get it wrong despite having a second chance. Louis would score his 19th of the year, but unfortunately, Pavel Datsuk would add one of his own, 3-2 at the end of the first period in a game in which, might I add, saw Tuka Rask and Peter Morozik as the goaltenders. It wasn't an elite showing for either, but in the second period, the wings struck back and Rask would be pulled. Datsuk would add another, Darren Helm would put up two, it was a 5-3 game, Rask goes outside, and Kempinem would tie it up, only for Zetterberg to score the game winner at 7.37 into the third period. And to sum this game up, let's be honest here, the defense just wasn't there. I don't personally blame Rask or Gus, it was just a poor showing from everybody. I mean, offensively it was there, but it's gotta be, you gotta have a balance to it. I mean, we're not... We're not saying anything new here, and and I mean, Jesus, has anybody ever seen as many goals as a direct result of face-offs before in a game? Unreal. But again, as we've seen all season, the Bruins are an inconsistent team. We go from an 11-game gong show with the playoff team to a three-goal defensive battle with a team led by John Tortorella. Bergeron, thank God, was back in the lineup, as was Adam McQuaid, although not for who the majority of the fan base would have preferred, as Colin Miller gets sent down to Providence. I said it earlier this season, I'd rather see him play in Providence than sit in the press box at the Garden, but it's mind-boggling that Trotman and Kevin Miller are in when he is not, regardless of contract structure, regardless of whether or not it's a two-way deal, and you can send him down without risk of losing him. It just doesn't make any sense. The Columbus game, though, unfortunately saw the end of Marchand's seven-game goal streak, but the returning Bergeron would strike for his 22nd goal of the year, and Louis gets his 20th of the year, the game winner in overtime, thanks to a beautiful pass from Krug. As far as the game itself goes against Columbus, complete polar opposites as compared to the Detroit game. You go from a fast, high-scoring affair to a slow, grinded out, and potentially it's subjective, but potentially a boring game. You can argue that Rask was horrible against Detroit, but talking about polar opposites, if he was a minus 9 out of 10 on the scale then, he was a pure 9 out of 10 in the positive in this game. 28 saves, outdueling the surprising Eunice Corpisalo. The only shot to beat him, a penalty shot in the first period. But as I've said, the Bruins are so inconsistent, you can't overreact to one game, which brings us to the third and final game of this review. And I'll say this about the Nashville game, at least it's over. Becca Rene, 16 goals allowed in his last four games, gets a 29 save shutout, his first since November, because of course. The Bees are three and two now through the six game road trip. They've won five out of their last eight games. And unfortunately, they were unable to capitalize on a brutal Detroit loss to the Pittsburgh Penguins. But somehow, the Bruins are still in sole possession of second place, a point above the wings, but now five points back of the division leading Florida Panthers. And again, that's why I say you can't overreact to one game. Because if you do, and if you try to focus on just that one game, you would think that this team is terrible, but again, they're in second place. It helps that the Atlantic division is arguably the weakest division in the league this year, but the Bruins being in a playoff spot, I will absolutely take it under any circumstances. It's been just such an odd season, and unfortunately there's no clarity as to where the team will go as we go towards the deadline. I can honestly see them trading Louis still, and I can also see them resigning him and potentially making deals to improve the team at the deadline. 
It's a big two weeks here, and I truly believe it's just as important as last offseason's moves were. Is this team primed for a cup run? Probably not. But were they in 2011? Arguable. Were they in 2013? Sure, they were in better shape than they are now. But truly, you never know what can happen for any team once you're in the playoffs. All I can say at this point is I'm eager to see what happens, and I just want to know what direction this team is going in. And Saturday night in Dallas should give us all a very good indication of where this team is going. But that will do it for this triple review. Again, I guess I picked a decent time to be able to miss out on some reviews because these three games, sure, you could say a lot about each of them, but really, who wants to talk about a 6-5 loss? Who wants to talk about a 2-0 loss? Thank you all so much for watching. As always, make sure to leave a like down below if you've enjoyed. Subscribe for more recaps after every single game. Spread the word, and I will see you all next time after Tyler Sagan and the Dallas Stars surely rip us apart.